welcome. Uh, we have, we're having ourselves a shorter day today because we got some work stuff we gotta go take care of, but I wanted to be sure uh, to still do a lesson today. So we're, we have a little fewer games to choose from, but we do have uh, a loss here on Sejuani that uh, uh, we started off the day off in our, our only uh, ranked loss of the day. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. We had some weird Sej games outside of this where we were the only AP on our team. So we had to like splash AP into our build. But this wasn't one of those games. Nor was it a game where we just got to like itemize armor super heavily. Um, and we... We didn't quite make the win. It was a very close game just looking at the kills right off the bat. Um, objectives, it looks like we didn't take many towers. We contested some drakes, um, but we weren't able to get any uh, pressure on the map beyond the outer turrets. So that's generally on our shoulders as a jungler to try and create that pressure, especially as a tank jungler, to try and like slowly advance the line um, in our favor into their side of the map. So let's go ahead and download this game. And open it up to see what we can learn from watching it. Make sure our drawing tool is working. Let's see here. Let's see if you guys see that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Click over here, click over there. Now you guys can't see that. Hold on. So while we're loading into game here, let's flip this around. Don't know why it always makes me do this. It doesn't always, but most of the time. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. So loading on in here. Um, once we pop back in, I can give a little review. Welcome to uh, Sindac23. <laughs> Not trend carry, yes. Welcome, welcome to the chat. Thank you. Uh, we, we gave you good compliments on the split push there. Very uh, effective use of the splitting there. That inhibitor, I think, was what ended up winning us the game. So thanks for hopping in. So we got, uh, let's check out the start here. Um, I think this was, yeah, this was a uh, more aggressive start for us. This is why you really gotta do five point starts um, defensively if we're not pulling an aggressive uh, push like this. I only ask top laner to come with me, so if I get caught out and bushwhacked, I can survive. Only way to win gold. Truth, the truth, split push is super strong. Um, so it does leave us vulnerable on this side to an invade, but this is a more rare path. If they're going to invade, typically they go this way. So pushing out as to gives us coverage here, but we really do need coverage here and here still. Having a late start like this from our bot lane and having uh, mid sit there, like I think that we don't even realize they're in this brush until somebody else gets there like they have completely free room yeah and look at this let's swap over to our vision Green has no idea and just happens to like be far enough away to where like they couldn't get a pull on him or anything he flashes the emote but so immediately upon seeing them in our jungle it's like all right well this is super safe so we're definitely going to take this we go forward here Prep just in case there was some sitting because we only did see two of them over there. I believe we only saw the two. So I drop a ward just to be safe because who knows if they're uh, gonna be around. Once we see that ward, it's like okay, they definitely aren't taking our blue. So if we can rush this, this will be nice and safe. Don't see anyone, so we're able to actually deny using the smite here, which gives us a little bit easier to clear at red. Wonderful. Seeing that our blue is available the whole time lets us know, okay, great. They aren't uh, invading. If they were going straight from red to our blue, they would be showing up on this ward, so we know this is nice and safe. There's a smite coming in for a little better clear on the red. So we get to mosey on over, comfortably knowing they're probably not uh, going. I'm actually gonna pause after those uh, pings. After uh, knowing that they didn't immediately rotate over to blue, it's like, okay, great. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take our blue. Echo, playing forward like this. Sure, it's because he's got quite a health advantage, but whenever a jungler sees that this is down, in my experience <laughs> of doing this kind of start, as soon as they realize it, they almost always gank mid. Sometimes they'll gank top as top if top is like pushed forward in the opposite direction that far. They always go for a gank, and they almost always go mid. 
Probably they're thinking like, hey, if we get a kill mid, we can both sweep over and try and contest blue. Um, or contest the uh, opposite side objective. But, um, I don't really ping out to be careful for that. And when there's aggressive play like that, where Echo blinks in, he uses his only escape uh, to blink in, he can get punished really hard. So what I think I need to start doing is in anticipation of that, both I need to tell our team to be ready to collapse around the blue buff area, but also I need to warn that there could be ganks coming from this direction into mid lane or this direction in the top lane. So that's really the only three places their jungler could be right now. He's either contesting the blue buff to not get three buff, or he's trying to do an early gank, an early gank into the top or middle lane. So I need to ping. If I know this is safe, I need to immediately ping any fog of war we have in this side of the river. So that's definitely like some tracking jungler stuff that we could do uh, a little bit better. Uh, yeah, we're getting the Twitch chat message. Distraction. That doesn't actually look like they're live, so. Back to the uh, lesson. Echo going in here. Good yellow card by TF, but since he gets the one auto off, it makes this uh, initial chain very easy. A good poke. He's looking to finish off the TF as quickly as possible. Now, I think I actually made a mistake here. Let's watch it. So I'm just trying to get my stacks onto Graves as quickly as possible to get the stun on him. Excuse me. And be able to deny him being a DPS of spells and auto attacks onto Echo so Echo can 1v1. But what I didn't anticipate was Echo being Oom right here. So maybe Echo could have finished TF off. But since TF still has effectively infinite mana right now, he's going to be able to cast spells while uh, Echo isn't. So sure, I'm able to... Uh, get the root down and immediately shatter it and try and burst out some damage. So thinking, again, okay, Echo finishes off TF, he can turn and we can kill Graves too. I think what I should have done is like rooted him, maybe not even auto attacked him on the way. And then as soon as I was here, queued forward to try and like at least get in range of TF to throw out abilities onto him or finish him off because of exactly what happens here. It was just too close between these mid laners. And as soon as he gets that yellow card, we're, we're screwed. Like there's no way we can reach TF anymore. We already burned our Q. And like, sure, if I was in range for TF, I could have killed him with that W, but I can't chase blindly into that. Especially when we know that their Thrush was coming. So, I think that was a little bit of a misplay. It was also just really close and kind of hard to tell. Kavari, oh, that was a grave mistake, Kavari, with the, with the puns. That those are my kind of puns. I like that. Um, and I got your DMs, by the way. We were actually neglecting the replay lesson for a little bit. Thank you for hopping in and hanging out. Um, so let's go ahead and fast forward here. Could have played that initial fight a little bit better. Could have warned Echo about the rotation from Graves. Could have been pinging out Graves on the map. Um, I'm not sure if I was like tracking him very closely after we saw him here. TF with the ultimate. Let's get a kill. I'm slow to get there. But I'm doing a full clear. Honestly, a stage, like that's just kind of part of my job is the full clear. I catch this wave as best I can and I think, the, think I didn't want to clear that because I could get an item. Probably was grabbing an item break there. Yeah, looks like boots. So we go really deep there, and since I'm not on the map, I took too long in base. I'm not able to provide any support. And this is something I do really chronically. I like sit and like analyze the build really hard, and I think like, hmm, should I get boots first or should I go for the enchantment first? And then I miss plays like that. Like if I had been here for this. Maybe we could have made that happen. I'm not sure we could have necessarily gotten there, but maybe we could have provided follow-up support for people to kite back through. Anything would have been better than sitting in base thinking about our build. So Thrush, I mean, that's just, we saw a similar play to that earlier. Like Thrush is auto-attacking me 
uh, in a past episode. Thresh is auto attacking me when I'm just clearing this red ward. There's nothing he's going to be able to do to stop me from this. And then he just sets up all his cooldowns, so he has no way to deal with us turning on him. And then we have enough of a stun chain from my lockdown on my E and the zillion bombs to where Draven gets a kill. And that's wonderful for us because it's on Draven. Like, he cashes in those stacks right off the bat. Go in to try and get some ward coverage or look for a repeat gank and Graves right there. So it's like, ooh, that's unfortunate. Do throw out the ult and break it and then back off so I don't risk dying. And Graves is uh, able to get killed off by Draven. Again, wonderful. Oops, that's our one. Uh, seeing that the TF had vision, I know this is a little risky, but we have so much control in bot lane. And saw it, I think I saw TF went mid, or top rather. So I do have to smite that early, just make sure I don't die. But we are able to get that, and it's a fairly safe Drake. If we're gonna play any Drake, Drake risky like that, Ocean is the one to do it on, because Ocean just doesn't have DPS. So I picked this up, uh, Echo didn't want it, so... Go ahead and charge out a base there. This was a mistake, I think. So let's actually go back and watch this. So I'm coming here. I want to try and push them off because I see like, oh, there's so few minions that are already in range. Like if I can just knock these couple ones back. But that's old Sejuani. She doesn't knock back with her Q anymore. She knocks up. So... I can't really knock these minions out of aggro range so that the turret swaps onto one of them, which makes them start to retreat away. And I think this is just a mistake. Because then I go in, right into, obviously I'm going to get chained like that. Very easy yellow card into that. And then the worst part is right here, the fail flash. The red buff slowed me enough to where I actually go down on that. And if I had known that the red buff was slowing me that bad, I could have just walked instead towards Zillion. And like, Zillion's ult range was probably about here, and I was like dying about there. So if I had instead just flashed, even just where I had walked to, I could have flashed with an ult range of Zillion and probably survived that. So just a mistake. Echo in the meantime had TP'd pretty deep and wasn't able to instantly make a play. So he just gets focused out because they collapsed on him. Unfortunate for us. But I definitely think that was because I it all started when I had tried to contest the middle outer. Probably just shouldn't have done that. Definitely shouldn't have fail flashed if I did. <laughs> Looking for an aggressive counter jungle here. I think I had seen like somebody bot. Yeah, Graves was bot, so I was like, okay, well I can't be there in time for that. But I can't try and get this. I kind of kite away here just in case TF was coming. I'm able to rotate top. Driven actually doesn't even need me, so great. Try and shove this down and then rotate over to Herald. I use the W to pu push the minions away. And then kite them to where they're all within AoE of my Cinder Hulk. Or Bomby Cinder at this point. Go over just to finish that off. We we'll charge on over. Drop the control ward so we know we have vision control. Go over the knock it down. Immediately, this is something that I've been a little bit admittedly bad about in the past. Um, especially lately, I feel like. Turning, right? So we have vision control here. We, we left a good trail of wards, so we have absolute vision control of this Graves. So as soon as he's in range, I just instantly ult him. Immediately, no hesitation. And then we're able to burst him out. Sure, he flashes. But Echo's able to flash and, uh, like, blink to him. Unfortunately, this resets, I wasn't able to pull aggro on it quickly enough. And doing that makes this risky, so we have to back out. But, that was a good turn. That was a free jungler kill, which gives me initiative over the map. Fortunately, I'm not really able to use it uh, to get the Rift Herald, which is the only objective, so I'm just clearing the jungle. Can't quite make it to Echo in time, so just keep on power farming. Shove out the mid because Echo's down and doesn't have TP. So trying to push it in to see if I can knock this turret down. Couldn't quite do it. Did get shoved away by uh, TF and Graves, but we're safe there. Come over here, start this for Echo. Echo picks it up this time. Not able to find anything. They do get the Drake, but again, it was just uh, Ocean Drake. Not that big a deal. 
much happier that we found a really good initiation on the backside. Couldn't quite kill Caitlyn there. But we are able to just retreat back to Rush and just barely finish him off with the Zillion Bomb. Great. So I rotate on down. To the minion wave. Thinking, alright, let's just keep the pressure going. Seems like we've been... I mean, I could have been there to help fight with that. But I think creating pressure on the minion wave, especially when I don't have ult and I'm so low on mana, is probably the right play. This turret's completely full, so I don't want to try and stay in greed for it. Looks like I'm waiting on an item break there. Rotate right away. Just because I want to get here as quickly as possible. We are able to push Graves away, which means that we will get the number advantage here. And that's two for three. Yeah. Ruben does get away from that in the end. As soon as we... Okay, let's actually pay attention to ourselves and stop watching the game. It's supposed to be about improving our own gameplay, okay? So, we're zoning away Graves. He's effectively zoned, and I see an opportunity to turn back on the Graves because he's looking to help out the team. Thinking me and Zillion are here, we can probably take him. But TFTP's on to Zillion, right? So, this is probably... I should have turned... Well, I don't know. This does force Graves back, which gives Zillion, Zillion a little bit of time. This was a little bit much. I should have probably just like eat him and then walked away. I think I'm being a little too greedy on like trying to proc the E every time and get the damage off. I am looking for a chance to uh, Zillion, of course, still alive. As is always the case. TF stepped a little bit too far forward. Once the team was able to start collapsing, so we have won the fight elsewhere. And I pick up the fruit so we can go for this. Now, unfortunately, here's another mistake I made for sure. So, seeing that's just us, I start to think, what? Where is Draven? Okay, he's picking up blue. Right here, Draven's. Now, Draven should be rotating here, let's keep it honest. But, seeing that Draven's gonna try and push this turret instead. We should just peel off. I should be thinking, no, 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 we can't do this, we can't do this. Instead, we're just like spamming assist, and like Echo's even burning ult for this. We just can't make it work. I end up even burning smite. Like at this point, we've realized it's not gonna happen, so we should just be leaving. We stay so long that Echo gets executed and burned ult, I burn smite, and sure, this is unfortunate, and he doesn't even wind up getting the turret, I don't think, here. No, he does, but he goes down for it, so... Definitely not the right play by Draven, but nonetheless, seeing that that was the play he was absolutely committed to making, I think we could have done that a little bit better. Um, we could have just peeled away and gone to support Draven there. And maybe gotten some kills around there, and on the back of that. We could have rotated the down. This is another mistake I made. I didn't have smite available. But I was just here to try and freak him out. And I do in fact freak him out. And like he misses his own smite. But I stand. I have an opportunity there to leave. Right here is my opportunity to leave. I start to leave but I go back for the last auto attack. And I just eat damage. Graves actually flashes for me. That was unnecessary. I didn't need to die there. Could have made it out alive. Yeah. Hold send to mid. Does wind up getting a kill on Echo. At that point, it's like, okay, well, I can't actually be out here in the jungle come back and really defend mid either try to make sure that they can't uh, take any minor objective in the jungle like blue to secure that for us seeing that they have backed off on that and tf is showing top it's like all right well let's just do this break might be free or we might be able to get a uh, fight out of it turns out we actually do get both right tf no tp no ult so we go in here. I 
throw my ult out in the group to try and get the AoE off, as, off on as many of them as possible. It actually does significant damage this fight. And we get a tremendous fight in our advantage. Sure, TP is, uh, TF has been split pushing the whole time. But, at the end of the day, we're able to clean up 4 for 1 and the Mountain Drake. Definitely worth the two turrets. Definitely worth TF pushing, <laughs> but also definitely worth us um, taking a fight like that. That was so in our favor. Unfortunately, there's not much other objectives to take. And I did get a little counter jungling done there. It was probably better just to recall. Like, denying raptors isn't that important. Especially because I don't think I was waiting on an item break. Our itemization looks okay. Because we need to get a little bit of MR into guard against TF, who's going really insane. But we have a lot of health already stacking up. So that's helpful against both MR and armor. <laughs> uh, or as both MR and armor. I'm just trying to set up my... Uh, wards around the barren area generally not on top of it because it's not going to spawn for a while yet um, but just to get some vision down and control this part of our jungle I like to pick a little bit of a fight with Yasuo uh, with Yasuo here and probably to a fault might, might have been a little too aggressive at the start there I leave Riven to finish him off and look for the 1v1 with Graves thinking okay she can probably finish him off and if I can just keep Graves busy, I'll be fine. Seeing the TF ult, I go way defensive and actually flash like that. I go back in with the Zillion ult, and as soon as I see they're not focusing me, I back out. Try and stay as far away from TF as possible. Try to make this happen. And I get that smite onto the Scuttle Crab. I should have gone more aggressively after smiting that Scuttle Crab. I did have the HP to do it. I was so low going into it, I was more concerned than I should have been. We were able to pick up the Thresh eventually, but... We did lose Echo along the way to TF. That's taking time to shop again. Should be a little bit quicker on the draw with our pickups. Shoving out the minion wave to give a bigger buffer zone for our inhibitor. And then I am able to go back and pick up an item. Not sure exactly what it was. I think it was completing Randuin's. So at this point, I wanted to start rotating over to the Baron. But we're trying to like defend this turret. So I do group at this point with the team. Do get a good ultimate off. Be able to get some significant damage down and start throwing out the ECC. I think I chased Caitlyn a little bit too long here. This is good to clear out the wave since I was already there. Maybe if I hadn't chased her as long, I could already be like where Zillion is. I could kind of be where my mouse is. Probably be on Drake right now. Right about when Riven would be there if she had made the wall jump. And maybe if I was here sooner, starting it, Draven wouldn't have recalled. But Draven is just allergic to doing this fair in this game. So that's unfortunate. Again, seeing that we aren't there, this time I do peel off properly. We do get some vision down. I look for... Let's actually jump back here, because I think this was another mistake we had made. I look to try and get some vision over here, but I have to queue away. So it took a little unnecessary damage there. Especially because I don't think I have any smite stone wards left. So the whole time that they were on Drake there, I would have wished that we would have grouped around Baron to get a stronger contest so we could have restarted Drake or we could have restarted Baron when we had confirmation they were on Drake. And then before they would have to contest us before whoever was here could join them to contest. And then we could turn and get a fight with the numbers in our advantage. So I think positioning here was correct. But again, 
it's a question of like seeing that my team is not grouping around the Baron area. If they're not in this general zone to contest Baron, if they're pushing out in this direction, me being here effectively doesn't do anything. Even if I think this is the wrong call, I think grouping with the team to make the call more effective is probably the right choice. Because instead, we get what wound up happening. We don't, we just give up the Infernal Drake, which has been the most important Drake this whole game, arguably with Mountain. Um, and we don't get any additional control around the Baron area. So I'm finally starting to uh, be more aggressive with the pinging. Draven still doesn't go for it, actually gets soloed by TF. So now we have to go into defensive mode here. Pick up the bomb, try and throw him away. The fight does break out here. And so that point that I take the look on the team. Unfortunately, she is able to get shielded up and uh, flash away. I keep going in to try and give them as much zone as possible to fight. I think I went a little bit too far. And it's actually that they don't even finish off Thrush yet. So we get split up. I'm sure Zill ults me, so I'm able to flash away and survive. But like, we wind up losing two for two there. And the initiative. Because they're all immediately back on this, and we have to back. Echo's brave enough to come in for a flint, and he gets their shield. But we lose the uh, inhibitor there. Charge out towards the Baron, just to get a ward on it, to get a little bit more vision. Jeff is able to catch out Echo, unfortunately. And I think this whole time I haven't been calling for proper grouping. I've just sort of been letting us not be grouped and like positioning myself. Leading by example, but like not actually trying to lead the team with calls. And I think that's also wrong. Because it's one thing to just start doing what is correct. It's another thing to also try and like shepherd the team. So I go in here to try and clear out that ward. TF is able to get me in the brush. I think I'm alright here. Yeah, I should be okay. It's right here where TF flashes and is able to catch Zillion. Now we have a problem. And, like, I should have probably rotated up this way, seeing these guys here. I just rotated the wrong way. So I go down too. I think that's, that's game. Yeah, that is game. So... I think what we could have done better this game is probably work around the team more. Because again, we haven't... We may have been doing what we thought. Let me come to my face. Come to the contemplative screen. Um, we may have been doing the plays that we thought were the right plays, but we our team clearly disagreed because they were elsewhere on the map, right? And as much as I may think, like, wow, that's just the wrong place to be, they're there, you know? It doesn't matter how wrong it is. Like, they could go back to base, and that would be even wronger than anything else. But if they went back to base, I shouldn't be out there without them. And that's on me at the end of the day. Like, I know better. I shouldn't be out there. And you guys saw on the first Baron attempt, like, Echo even died. Like, he ulted and died through an execute. And I, like, early smited. It was horrible. There's no reason I should be doing that. As soon as I know we're not going to... If it's going to be... Some, if it's going to take that much of a length to try and make it happen, we should just peel off and say, fuck it. Like, obviously, I thought it was the right call because I was here too. But you know what? Fuck it. We need to just back off and rotate to wherever Draven was in the top lane. Um, or uh, we should have, like, turtled more, I guess. I think we have to make aggressive plays like that to get back in the game. And once we had lost so many turrets, we were starting to snowball behind, even though the kills were pretty even. And we were able to win fights. Like, we saw at Drake. When we, TF wasn't there in proper position, we won that fight very handedly, one for four. Um, and we got a Drake. So that was good. 
Or I think they got it, and it doesn't matter. The point is we won the fight very handedly, and it gave us initiative over the map. So if we could pick a fight like that together, we could have still won that game. It was on us to make sure that we led the team to group properly. Because it's not just about rotating properly, it's about grouping properly. And it's very easy to be like well grouped if you're all rotating to the same objectives that you all agree in unison are a prior priority. But if there's disagreement on what objectives are the priority and it's showing because you guys are splitting up, that's where the problem happens. And as the jungler, it is on me to make sure that shit doesn't happen. And if that shit is happening, it is on me as the jungler to correct that. I often, the support can play the same role too, but I think support and jungler are the two main like shot caller people because they get to have more of their attention divided on the map and on objectives than the individual laners do. So it's on me to not just say, okay, what's the right objective from my perspective, but also what is the right team call and how do I rotate us around our team? If somebody's like tunneling on a particular objective, hey, that happens to me too. <laughs> I get it. But I need to identify that and then play around it and not just be like, oh man, I'm just going to commit to the, the right thing so much so that we wind up giving up a kill or we ex get executed or something like that and we lose initiative over the map. That's the absolute wrong call. Whether or not it was initially the right play, it becomes the wrong play if we don't play around that. So again, as somebody who is making those shot calls, it is on me to take that into account. And shot calling is not just what is the right play, it's what is the right play given the circumstances on the ground. And as the circumstances change, maybe it was right to start the Baron, but as soon as we start that Baron, if somebody peels away and starts doing blue buff and then trying to rotate up to top inner turret, we need to peel off and support them because we can't do the Baron alone. You know, and that's that's on us. That is our call. So, well, we made some other plays early on in the game. Uh, we could have, you know, not fail flashed. We could have not tried to defend a turret so hard. <laughs> um, I think there was also like a misplay at some point with, uh, like we missed an ult or something. Some something like that. That feels less significant and more like, oh well, we we were a little off on that. I think playing around the team was the thing that got us. Because we were making divided calls. And that's at the end of the day what allowed us to be picked off. It's what allowed us to lose initiative over the map that was supposed to give us objectives. So playing around our team's grouping and making rotations based on grouping. And not necessarily just rotations based on what objective is the most priority to focus. Keeping the team together is how I need to like also focus on doing rotations. So... That was a good lesson, a hard lesson, because I, in my opinion, that shouldn't have been a loss. That should have been one game, for sure. Um, so it sucks to lose that, but that is an important lesson, I think, because I don't, I don't really take that into account. And I often play jungle and support. <laughs> so I need to be a little bit more mindful about trying to get our team to rotate around grouping as well as rotate around objectives. That's the lesson for today. If you know anybody who uh, is playing shot caller roles like I am, jungler and support fairly often, and uh, wants to uh, like learn a little bit better how to shot call, learn a little bit better how to rotate, take the grouping into account if that's something they don't do, or if you think that's something they do well, and like, look, here's a bad example of when people don't do that. Feel free to share this video. Uh, hopefully it can be of uh, use to you guys in improving your own play. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you guys next lesson.